the topic for today is section 9.10, which is Taylor and McLaurin and Sirius. So it, the title is somewhat similar to section 9.7, which is Taylor polynomials. Now we want to talk about Taylor and McLaurin and Sirius. It's a similar uh, notion, but there are also differences. So let's recall what we did in 9.9. .9. Basically, our main strategy was that we knew uh, a representation of 1 over 1 minus x to be sum of x to the n when n goes to 0 to infinity if x is between negative 1 and 1. And then we use tricks to manipulate this uh, um, power series or this equality to get representation for some other functions. Today we want to do something that's more general. So I don't want to depend on tricks and I don't want to what, what if I get some function that has no direct connection with 1 over 1 minus x? Can I represent that function with a power series? So that's the main question. Can I represent a function f of x in the form of the power series sum of a n x, x minus c to the n of i1? Let, let the network doesn't matter x to the n and go 0 to infinity on an interval between negative r and r. Because if it's power series, we know that it converges on, uh, on a, a, a symmetric interval. So this is the question. So I get a function. So can I represent it? And how? So not starting from someone else, hoping that I'll run into my function, but the other way around, just starting with my function and getting that representation. And here's that main theorem, so that's Taylor's theorem. And it says the only way to do it is the following. If f of x equals sum of a n general x minus c to the n, and it goes to infinity for x between c plus r and c minus r or x minus c, which is the same as x minus c by absolute value less than r, then a n must be equal to the nth derivative at c over n factorial. And if you remember, these were exactly the coefficients where we had in Taylor polynomial. The only difference is there we didn't go all the way to infinity. We would stop somewhere that's polynomial. Here it says, if you want, to go all the way to infinity, the only way to do it is actually through that uh, sequence of Taylor uh, coefficients and then just taking actually the limit of Taylor polynomials. That's the same thing. So, so what is the proof of this? The proof is very simple. Why? I'm just going to give you a hint. Uh, if I want this to happen, then let me plug in C. So f of C equals and, and, what, and, and what's this? This is actually what, uh, let me rewrite f of x, it's more open. f of x is a0 plus a1x minus c plus a2x minus c squared and so on. It, it, it might be cleaner here. So when I plug in x equals c, I get f of c equals a0 because all the other expressions disappear, they're equal to 0. And then what? Then, uh, then I keep do, uh, doing the same thing. If you want to prove, you would do proof by induction. So, so, so if I want to show it for a1, what do I do? I take the negative left and right. So I get f prime of x. This disappears as a constant. So I get a1 plus 2 times a2x minus c plus 3a3x minus c squared and so on. Now if I plug it in, um, then what you have, and everybody disappears except a1, so I get f prime of c is a1. So if I keep doing it or, or showing it by induction, generally these coefficients show up uh, in the second derivative, so second derivative, then this goes uh, into constant, so we get 2a2 plus 3 times 2 a3x minus c and so on. So when you plug second derivative at c, everybody disappears, but now we have these constants like 2 factorial a2. So when you solve, we get f2 over 2 factorial is a2. And then, as I said, we keep going and get the others. So it's quite obvious why is it really true. 
be careful of what we used here. As a very important thing is that we differentiated this uh, power series under uh, member by member, and, and 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 we said last time that that's legal within uh, interval of convergence. So this is actually the crucial result. So not only that we showed when it could be done. So if we have differentiability, uh, and it must be equal to. Uh, it must appear this way, but we also have a, a recipe when we get a function, how to get its power series representation directly. So here is an example. So um, we will illustrate this in the case of the function f of x equals sine x. Example, f of x equals sine. So what do we do here if we hope that it could be represented, then what what do we do? We calculate derivative the same way as we did in the section of table polynomials. This is cosine x. Second derivative is negative sine x. Third derivative is negative cosine x. Fourth derivative of x is again sine x. And it keeps repeating with a period of four. So we have these are four, not of sine x, cosine x, and so on. So when we plug in x equals 0, we we'll get 0 here. We we'll get 1, we we'll get 0 here. We we'll get negative 1, we we'll get 0, uh, plus 1, and so on. So generally, we'll say, all right, so if we want power series, f of x should be equal. Why, why don't we just write an open form so it would be 0 plus 1x? plus 0x squared minus 1x squared, or 2 factorial, remember the formula, plus 0x cubed minus um, 1x, uh, here is x cubed. So, so this is all okay. right. So this is second and third derivative is minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 0x to the 4 minus 1 over the fifth factorial x to the fifth plus the and so on plus or minus. So how would we write this in the closed form? It would be, what would that be? Sum. And then, uh, of course, only odd powers appear, and that's reasonable because sine x is odd function. So what would happen here? It would be x to the 2n plus 1 to emphasize that uh, we are using only odd powers, so that would start with n equals 0. Let's double check it. When n is 0, I get x to the first, which is exactly what I need. Then when n is 1, I get x to the third, and so on. And then what? Whatever that exponent is, that factorial is down, so that would be 2n plus 1 factorial. And that's it. So just 1 minus 1, so we need alternator. I'm not sure if it should be minus 1 to the end or minus 1 to the end plus 1. Sometimes it's one, sometimes the other. The easiest way is just to test it for the first member when n is 0. I'm getting x to the 1 over 1, and then minus 1 to the 0 is 1. So I'm getting positive, which it should be. Here is the Taylor series. And then what? Uh, what is the radius of convergence of this series where this is valid? So this is valid everywhere um, where where this series converges, and this series converges, it's very easy to see uh, that uh, if you do radius of convergence, we actually did it in section, is infinity, that means converges everywhere, so interval is negative infinity to infinity. So what is that telling you, like in that example that, uh, that we did in that applet, uh, for cosine x, for sine x, sine x is equal to its power series for every x. So generally, the further away your x is, of course, we have to go deeper uh, with, uh, with, with, with more members. But generally, no matter what x, you can find the polynomial degree that's um, high enough to approximate your polynomial as precisely as you want around that x. And that's very important, actually, here M. So uh, generally, one of the main lines today is that we memorize some power series 
for some of the most famous functions because that will be like your library of Taylor. You don't want always to do this. So you want the library of, of these um, representations. So generally, I'd like now to write that library. So here is what everybody needs to memorize. So the same way as we derived here, we, uh, uh, we, de we derived similar uh, Taylor series for some other famous functions, and here they are. We need to memorize, I said, all of that. f of x is sum of x to the n over n factorial, and it goes 0 to infinity. So all, all the powers are there, all the factorial. So what's this? 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. What is the interval? Negative infinity to infinity. So that means what? Uh, I didn't decide which function this is, so this is to the x exponential function. So if you read it as a function, this function has domain negative infinity to infinity. If you think of it as a series, it has a radius of convergence of negative infinity to infinity. Then cosine x and sine x kind of split this up. So cosine x only takes even powers, which is common sense because it's even function, but it alternates. So forget the odd ones and take the even ones and alternate. So then x to the fourth over four factorial minus six to the six over six factorial, and so on. And then sine x would be the other way around. Forget the even ones, take the odd ones and alternate. That's what we just derived in the table. If you want closed form here, what would that be? It would be sum, and you get what? even power, so it will be 2n factorial on the bottom. Here it will be x to the 2n, n goes from 0 to infinity, and then minus 1 to the n. Let me check. When n is 0, I get minus 1 to the 0, which is 1. 0 factorial is 1. x to the 0 is 1. So I will get 1, and it keeps going. Sine x, we already explained it in the, in the closed form. All three of these have interval of convergence negative infinity. It's always important. If you don't know interval of convergence, you don't know validity of those formulas. So it's important that, that you learn that as a package. And then what? Uh, there are two of them that are often used. And that one is um, one, one is for LN. I, I like LN uh, series a little differently from your book. Your book likes LNX. But then they, they, they get a uh, series center at one because that's um, that's where ln is equal to zero. Generally, I prefer ln one plus x shifted one because it's then pure Maclaurin series. What would that be? X minus x squared over two plus x cubed. We already derived this in section nine, plus x to the fifth over five, and so on. So what would this be? Sum n goes, what? Uh, n goes from one to infinity, doesn't go from zero to infinity. So it would be what? On the bottom, we don't have factorial, we have n. And here it would be x to the n. And then we don't want to go either n or n plus 1. If I go n, my first member would be negative, And my first number member should be positive. So we go either n plus 1 or n minus 1. It's up to you. Let's say n minus 1. And here it is. So when I test it, when n is 1, I get minus 1 to the 0, which is 1. Over 1, I got x. When n is 2, I get minus x squared over 2 and it all works. But here is the big thing to remember and that is, and that's easy, we also analyze this interval of convergence here is minus 1 to 1. And then what else? Uh, we use that somewhere. Uh, actually, why don't we also analyze the endpoints? If you do endpoints, then when x is 1, you get alternating series. So generally, this is correct also at 1. And at negative 1, it's not, because negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the n minus 1, they kill the alternator, because you just get pure negative 1. So that's basically opposite of harmonic series. So it diverges. And then there is one more uh, uh, example that I like you to learn. And that one we, uh, we will derive later. And that one is so-called binomial series. So binomial series, and that's a 1 plus x to the k. Okay, it's called binomial because you use binomial formula. 
So, uh, so how do you use uh, this formula? The same way as you use uh, binomial formula uh, for, uh, for finite case, uh, because this one could be used uh, uh, or, uh, for, for, uh, for, for, for some non-integer values. Uh, so, so what would uh, uh, that be? So that would be what? One plus k choose one x. I'll explain to you, uh, what this means if you forgot this. Plus k choose two x squared plus k choose three x cubed and so on. Which is what? So you can write it in close form. So it's the sum n goes zero to infinity k choose n x t Interval of convergence uh, is um, negative one to one. Uh, so, so what happens here? Um, uh, by the way, uh, why is that interval of convergence? Because the members do not go to zero at the end points. Uh, what is this symbol? Choose symbol. So, choose symbol is is, is like this k choose let's say three, you do like this, three factorial, three, two, one, and then here you call k, k minus one, k minus two. So three members, one, two, three, one, two, three, because now we have three, two, one. So k choose n, in general, what do you do on the bottom? You take n factorial, and here you go k, k minus one, da, 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 k minus n plus one. You don't call k minus n because that would give n plus one. So here, here is our library of example of series that it's important to memorize. And not a big deal. Once you memorize it to dx, those two count as a bonus. Then this one we already analyzed a few times. Um, it's important to, uh, to make the distinction that this expression here has n, doesn't have factorials. And that's exactly why its interval is much shorter than the previous three. So previous three all converge on negative infinity, infinity, but this one just between negative one and one exactly because it lost that factorial. The same one here is with binomial, it converges between negative one and one. So that's what it is. For some most important functions, we have Taylor representation that we memorize, and now let's see how do we play with this. So for example, uh, let me show you. Um, how do we do, here is example, since I already mentioned this one example, number 15. Let's say f of x equals one over one plus x squared. Can we um, write uh, Taylor series uh, for this function? So what is this basically? can write it as a 1 plus x to the negative 2. So that's why this is not standard binomial formula, because standard binomial formula uses only positive integers on top. Here I have negative integers, but doesn't matter. We'll say the following. So that's our f of x. So f of 0 is just 1. And then let me get f prime of x. f prime of x will be minus 2, 1 plus x to the minus 3. So that f prime of 0. second derivative of x. Negative 3 comes down, so I have 3 times 2, 1 plus x to the negative 4. So I have second derivative of 0 is what? Uh, 3 factorial. And then a third derivative of x is what? You, uh, you can see the pattern of the negative 4 factorial and so on. So f nth derivative of x will be negative n minus uh, and negative n plus one. All right. So what do we do now? Now we uh, we uh, we call the formula. So how will the formula look like? It will look like this one. Equals 
it. Uh, it's probably better to work on it through just member by member because we will get a better chance to see the pattern than really to be kind of uh, um, too ambitious and do it in a closed form. But we can do it in closed form, of course. So it is a 1 plus k choose 1, so, so what's that? It's two cho uh, negative 2 choose 1, so it's just negative 2. Plus, then what do we do here? k choose 2, and that's actually, I don't know why, uh, why, why I got the, these derivatives when I had ready made formula. So that will be k choose 2, so what would that be? 2 factorial here, and then here negative 2. Times uh, negative three. That's that negative three. All right. That's x squared plus negative two, negative three, negative four over three factorial x cubed. So you so you, so you can see the pattern plus and so on. So what would that be basically? It's one minus 2x. Uh, what's happening here? First we get a plus because of two minuses. 22 factorial cancels, so we get plus 3x squared. What about this guy? We'll get a minus because we have three minuses. And then top has all the way to 4. 4 factorial over 3 factorial, so it'll be just 4x cubed and so on. So we can write a closed form. So what would that be? It's just the sum and it goes 1 from 0 to infinity. And it will be x to the n, and n plus 1 in front of it, because when I have x squared, I have 3, x squared has 4, and then I hit the alternator, it's minus 1, either to the n or to the n plus 1, I would say to the n. Why? Because at 0, minus 1 to the 0 is 1, so we exactly get 1 x to the 0, so this is the final form. And then what you can do also, I don't know, you know if you remember, in the previous section, uh, we obtained uh, this series uh, also. How did we get it there? We generally took 1 over 1 plus x, and we use geometric series to write it as 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth minus plus and so on. The geometric series with a ratio negative x. And then when you differentiate this, you get minus 1 over is what? The derivative of negative x is negative 1 plus 2x minus 3x squared plus 4x cubed and so on. Looks like ours, just with the chain sign that's equal exactly because of this. 1 over 1 plus x squared is what we got. 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 4x cubed and so on. We are not done yet. Why we are not done? Because we have to know validity of this formula, and validity of this formula is what? That x, I, got, I, I better write it, 1 over 1 plus x squared equals, here is the final answer, nice clean, negative 1 to the n, and plus 1 x to the n, when x is between negative 1 and negative. So that's that's how we use this. So, as you see, uh, actually, what I did here was I was going into Taylor's formula uh, on my own. So, this would be work from scratch. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually, you don't really need this once you have it. That's why we memorize these formulas to avoid doing that extra work. So, generally, we just call the formula the way it is ready made there, plug it in, and use it. And then a couple of other problems, so, so just uh, let, uh, let's see uh, how we can use this uh, in an interesting way. So what would that be? So uh, now manipulating those series that we memorized, we can again get some new series the same way as we did it with geometric series. So a couple of examples of this type. And that is, for example, f of x equals sine of x squared. How would you represent that? It's not on the list, but it's quite obvious. If I plug in x squared for x, 
Denang kita dah cikgu sibuk buat x squared minus x to the six over three factorial plus x to the tenth over five factorial twenty nine factorial minus x to the fourteen over seven factorial and so on. So generally, if you look at it in the closed form, what would that be? It was before. It was sum n goes from, um, so sine x would be what? Here is the form. So it would be n goes from 0 to infinity, x to the 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 factorial, negative 1 to the n. And then, so, so what is the only difference? Here, we see it be, it, instead of x, we put x squared, so it will be x squared. And of course, if you multiply that, you get some. Can go from zero to infinity, negative one to the n, x to the four n plus two over two n plus one factorial. And really, if you keep plugging, you will get your x squared, you will get the x to the six, and so on, and you get your alternation. So everything works. A couple of other tricks. Here is one famous trick. Uh, that Euler did in the old times to get a very surprising result that actually still sounds puzzling, and here it is. Um, let's, let's take this um, expression for x and, and, and let's calculate e to the i x. Even if we are not sure what it means, we are finding exponential of complex expression, so i stands for square root of negative 1. And what we know is that i squared is negative 1. So we'll just really do things algebraically without making too much sense out of it. So we get the following, 1 plus ix plus ix squared over 2 factorial plus ix cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. But what do we get here? It's a very interesting, famous moment for the history of mathematics. When we execute these powers, here's what happens. We get 1 plus ix. Here we get i squared, x squared over 2 factorial, plus i cubed, x cubed over 3 factorial, i to the 4, x to the 4, to the 4 factorial, i to the 5, x to the 5, over factorial, and so on. And here comes the best thing. If you look at the even powers, then what will happen? Those powers will give us a real number. So let me write them first. So what do we get here? We get 1 plus i squared is negative 1, so it will be negative 1 x squared over 2 factorial. Then this one will give me plus 1 x to the fourth over four factorial. And then it will be, you can imagine, negative one, x to the six over six factorial, and so on. And now I look at these guys with odd powers. What happens there? Plus, ix is just ix. i to the cube is negative i, so it's negative i x cubed plus, this is plus i, i to the fifth, is i to the fourth times i, i to the fourth is negative one squared, so it's one times i, just i. So I get i again, i x to the fifth over five factorial, minus i x to the seven over seven factorial, and so you might not be able to see this green, but I don't know. So what will this do? Uh, on this guy, I can factor out i. So who do I get here? x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, factor 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial over that dot here. And this orange guy I'll just copy. 1 minus x squared. Or factorial minus x, and so on. 
And then if you look on the left, this guy is exactly what we have here. That's basically cosine x. And this guy in parentheses is exactly what we have here. So it's sine x. There is an extra i. i sine x. And this is the famous Euler's formula that says e to the i x, whatever it means, is basically nothing else but cosine x plus i sine x. This is one of the most famous formulas in mathematics. We got it as a very easy, actually, application of what we learned about power series. So just plugging in here, you didn't do anything else. Just plugging in and using little algebra. Uh, then what are the other things that we can do with the power series? We can do something like this. What if we have the expression f of x? example, f of x equals e to the x ln of 1 plus x. This is not our most favorable situation, so this, this will have some issues. And what are the issues? Uh, first, we are hoping to get a series that converges when x is between negative 1 and 1. Why is that? Because that's the only place where this converges. So, so so what we do will be just applied on this interval. So here's what we can do. So f of x equals e to the x. We can write as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. So ln of 1 plus x, it's times. Here is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed. And so, on. so generally, we are facing a very strange fact to actually multiply two series, but they are infinite series. So what do we do here? Basically, we foil, but foil. There's no last anywhere here in foil. So what do we do here? Basically, we just organize them according to the increased power of the result. So what? The lowest power here is x, so you multiply everybody with everybody, but we systematize it so that we get the lowest possible result. Look at this, lowest here is 1, lowest here is x, so our first foil 1 times x, that will give me x. Then, how do you get x squared? So if you want, so, 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 so it was actually power 0 plus 1 gave me 1. If you want power 2, you get what? 0, uh, 0, 2, 0 plus 2, 1 plus 1, or 2 plus 0. That means take a constant times squared. So with x squared, we get 1 times negative x squared over 2. 1 and 1 would be plus x times x. And then 2 plus 0 is impossible because this guy does not have power 0, so there's only two of them to give us a square. Then on x cube, we do the same thing, 0 plus 3. So that would be 1 third. Let me pull that x cube out now to be a little better prepared. So it would be what? Uh, 1 times x, uh, 1 third. Then x and x squared would give me x cube. So that will be minus 1 half. And then 2 and 1 will give me also plus 1 and so on. So basically just multiplying these series we will get the following x then this will give me plus one half x squared these two cancel plus one third x cubed and so on. So generally just multiplying out of course uh, it's uh, complicated here to, uh, to develop a general formula to give us closed form, but very often we use uh, Taylor series, just first few members for approximations, and this should be a fairly good strategy. Another example, so generally we are learning how to manipulate what we know to get what we need. Here is something very interesting, interval from 0 to 1 half, arc 10 of x, 
x dx. So here it is. So this is something that we face very often in mathematics. We, we need to integrate something, and we don't know how, how to do it. So generally, you can try maybe, I don't know, partial fraction. I mean, uh, integration by parts or something like that. And we are not succeeding. So here's what we can do. Basically, why don't we write arc 10 uh, using its uh, uh, Taylor series? and then integrate it member by member and get the results. So what I'm going to do, I forgot arc 10, but I know this, that's what we did quickly. One, plus, one over one plus x squared is one minus x squared plus x to the third minus x squared plus x eight minus and so on. That's a geometric series. Then when we integrate, we get arc 10 of x is what? x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5 over 5 minus x to the 7 over 7 plus x to the 9 over 9 and so on. So what would that be? So that would be the sum and it goes 0 to infinity. It would be f to the 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 negative 1 to the n. All our powers divided by their exponent negative 1 to the n, let me double check when n is 0, I get plus x, that's good. So generally, here, that's what I'm plugging. There is 1 over x times the sum that I got there. Uh, what is it? I forgot. This is all valid, but x is between negative 1 and 1. So when that happens, here's what I can do which is for me okay, because my interval of integration is exactly within there, so it's all good. So it would be integral, but uh, negative one to the n, x to the 20 plus one, over 20 plus one, so that's my arc 10, is the x. And the reasonable move, one over x can distribute inside each of them, so I get zero to one, so I get sum, and go to zero to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2 n over 20 plus 1. X. What do I do now? With an interval of convergence, I can integrate member by member. So that would be sum, and it goes 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Integral between 0 and 1, x to the 2 n. So why is this so good? Because each of these integrals is fairly easy. Uh, what about 12 plus 1? X treats that as a constant. I can pull it out. So it's sum. Uh, and it goes 0 to infinity. Negative 1 to the n times 1 over 12 plus 1. So this is gone. Integral of x to the 2n is x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Which is zero and, one. and that's it. So what happens here? I get sum and it goes 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 is 1 over 2n plus 1 squared. When I plug in, so this is all gone. When I plug in 1 for x, I get 1. When I plug in 0, I get 0. So the time is 1 minus 0. So here is actually. Our final result is sum and it goes 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over 20 plus 1 squared. And that's our result. So you can say, but what kind of result is it? Then uh, uh, what kicks in is, uh, is our, uh, uh, our knowledge uh, from uh, from numerical series, what can we say about this uh, expression? It's absolutely convergent. So that means I can estimate this result by going far enough. So if you need, for practical purposes, how much is this area, you just go all the way to like, for example, if I go to n equals 10, 
and what happens, my error will be less than the last omitted member, and last omitted member is uh, 21, so it's 441, so my, la my error will be less than 3 over 1000, so my error will be less than, so if I take just first 10 member, I will get the result with the error less than 0 0.03, which is fantastic. If I take 11, then it will be less than 1 over 1000. So that shows that this is practically a really very good strategy, and by doing this, we can uh, we can actually um, address complicated integrals. And basically, this is how your calculators again give you the values of the definite integral. They approximate with functions, integrate uh, power series, and then estimate the result. Here's another nice example how we can use uh, this newly learned technique. Uh, let's look at the following integral. Example. Uh, textbook number 56. Approximate. integral between 0 and 1 half arc tan x or x dx. Accurately, uh, with the error less than or equal 10 to the minus 4. So what are we going to do here? Uh, generally, since we don't know how to solve this integral to find uh, anti-derivative uh, in in, as an elementary function, we use the following trick. We use the Taylor series, so integrate Taylor series for arc tan x. Do we, how do we get that series? We already talked about it, how to get power series for our arc tan x. We actually started with this in section 1.9. This is a um, uh, geometric series with a ratio negative, uh, negative x squared. So that will be 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth. We already saw this, but let me repeat it. And then we integrate, so our 10x, integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared and it's actually integral of 1 minus x plus x squared plus 6 to the fourth minus x to the sixth. You can do it in closed form, of course. So what would that be? It would be x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh, and so on. It should be plus c. We plug it in x equals 0 and realize that it's c equals 0. So we got the following representation here arc 10 of x equals the sum n about 0 to infinity and then we go minus 1 to the n x to the 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1. So generally we, we have all, all the odd powers and then they start with plus, they alternate. So here is the arc 10 x that we derived in the previous section. I just review that again. So what do we do then? We just, uh, and this is all valid when x is between negative 1 and 1. Why? Because all these uh, calculations are valid. And that's good enough for us because in our integral is between 0 and 1 half. That's deeply inside our interval of convergence. So here's what we'll do. We will replace arc 10x with its power series representation. And then our, we'll just integrate this series member by member. So here's what will happen. We'll get the following integral between 0 and 1 half arc 10x over x dx equals integral between 0 and 1 half. I'll pull out 1 over x in front of it and arc 10 I'll, I'll replace what we have here. So and you come 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n x to the 2 plus 1 over 
now between uh, within interval of converge and oh no first thing is just I can distribute one over x and what will that to do if you multiply each of them one power of x cancels one of these odd powers so it will be x to 2n See, our function is just written now uh, as a power series. But what's good about it? Uh, within interval of convergence, we can integrate power series and get the following, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n equals in, and integrate each of them individually. Why is that so good? Because these are power functions and they are trivial to integrate. And suddenly, our task becomes absolutely trivial. Minus 1 over n. I'll pull out 2n plus 1 as a constant, because it doesn't depend on x. And then I get integral x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, which means 0. And what would that give us? It would be sum n goes 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. We get 2n plus 1 squared. And then when I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 to the 1 plus 1 minus 0. And here's our final answer. Our integral, actually, is equal to this infinite sum. Does it make sense? Does this infinite sum converge? Yes, it's absolutely convergent, because it's obviously comparable to hypergeometric series. So it converges. So generally, what happens? Uh, there is th this sum stabilizes somewhere and we will estimate it uh, uh, better and better. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I forgot something. No, I made an error because I didn't want from 0 to 1, I want from 0 to 1 half. So it should be 1 half here, sorry. So it would be 1 half to the n plus 1, so it would be 1 over 2 to the 2 plus 1. So here, here is the real reason. What's even better, actually, because now converges even, even faster. So generally, the question is now, if I, uh, how many members should I take in order to get accuracy within 1 over 1,000? That's what they said here. So let me erase this, and I'll erase that error. So, so, I'm, so once again, we are seeing that the integral between 0 and 1 half x x is equal to this infinite sum and it goes 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 squared 1 times 1 over 2n plus 1 so if you remember since this is alternating series our error is less than so error is less than or equal than the first only So then what do we want? We want by absolute value. We take absolute value of this. So we want 1 over 2a plus 1 squared times 2 over 2a plus 1 to be less than or equal 1 over 10 to the 4th. And how do we solve this inequality? General denominator, 2a plus 1 squared times 2 to the 2a plus 1 should be greater than or equal 10 to the 4th. And then how do we solve this? We can use calculators or we can just use trial and error. Let's see what happens if we take n equals 4. So we get 9 squared, which is 1, times 2 to the 9. And that will uh, be uh, 2 to the 9. And this is greater than or equal to 10 to the 4. Why? Because uh, 2 to the 9 is uh, 512 times 81 is 40,000. So, or something like that. So it's bigger than 10,000. So what it says is if you want to have accuracy 1 over 10 to the 4th, it's enough to take uh, all the uh, so members up to 4. So generally when we have that, it tells me the following, that this is approximately 
So all the way at the, when when n goes to four, so so it would be what when n is zero, we will get to one over one times two. So this is zero and one is one, and this is two, and then it will be minus one over uh, when n is uh, one, we will get thirty squared. Times two to the third plus when n is two, we will get five squared to the fifth minus one over five third two to the seven plus one over five to the four times two. So if we take this expression and calculate it, we will get our integral with the arrow less than 1 over 10,000, which is for many practical purposes quite good. And that's basically how our calculator does it, although they want accuracy uh, 10 bits, digits correctly. So if you want 10 to the negative 10, then you just take a few more numbers. And just uh, on a on final note, uh, let me mention one theorem that actually connects uh, our this error estimate and actually just a uh, convergence for the final series and that that theorem says the following basically how do you know when you write function f of x and then you write sum of f and c for n factorial x minus c to the n and it goes zero to infinity how do you know that that series convergent and that they are equal. So here's the theorem says theorem let Pn of x be the nth Taylor polynomial, which means sum of f k degrees over c of k factorial x minus ck, k goes from 0 to n. So this is n degree. The other polynomial. So you just take, it's actually a partial sum also of that full Taylor series. And then what? And let Rn of x be a difference, f of x, like what we introduced in section 9.7. Then we will say the following f of x equals sum of f of c and entire Taylor series. If and only if limit. R and x, so for those x's where you can get, and that's kind of common sense, or actually we mean their approach is zero, you get the convergence, and, and that's how you approximate uh, f of x by pn of x. Although, like in the previous examples, more often than you know, getting that somewhat tricky, uh, technique of estimating uh, the, the Rn with a complicated formula that we learned in uh, in chapter in section nine nine point seven. We more often use uh, this idea that we saw in the previous problem, where we just say our oh, error is less than the first omitted number, and that one guarantees convergence and also tells us how accurate we are with the estimate.